How's it going, everybody? This is another episode since last week, obviously. That's how this works. Basically, uh, I don't know if anybody has seen, because it doesn't seem like many people are reacting to it, but on YouTube, we hit over 10,300 views collectively. That means, like, out of all the stuff that we've posted, it's got over 10,000 views. That's pretty crazy. I'm not gonna, I didn't even expect us to break 100, to be completely honest with you. But that's pretty dope. So, you know, last week we talked about old Trumpy and almost getting assassinated. Old Trumpy. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> old Trumpy. The Trumpy. So, this week, it's a little bit of a continuation Pretty much same subject matter here. First thing is Secret Service, you know, everybody's favorite service right now. The the director, the head, Mrs. Kimberly Cheadle. Did you know that Cheadle is actually what they call the dust that Cheeto uh Cheetos leave behind on your finger? The orange dust is called Cheetle. Cheetle. Or is it Cheetle? Cheetle? <laughs> Cheeto? I think it's Cheeto. Is that from Cheetos? Yeah, yeah, Cheetos. I think it's called, I think it's called Cheeto. Crispy? Crunchy. Yes. Both of them. A puffs. Both. I don't like no puffs. What's your favorite? What? Crunchy. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. I remember. I remember. It would, when I got my license, it was run up to the store and give me some uh, Dr. Pepper and some Cheetos. Not the puffs. If you bring them, I ain't eat them. So, that, that is true. But, director of the Secret Service... Mrs. Kimberly Cheadle has resigned. I'm sure you've already seen it because this, this news is a couple of days old. But, uh, yeah, basically. Yeah, she had to resign. Pretty much. I mean, they, they called her up to Capitol Hill and they asked her about the failures of the Secret Service, which, I mean, like, kind of admittedly, she failed. Somebody almost shot Donald Trump in the head. Matthew Thomas Crooks, the attempted shooter. Okay, uh, both Democrats and Republicans questioned her pretty harshly. Honestly, the first time I've ever seen Democrats and Republicans agree on something is uh, now, you know, when, when they were really berating this lady. But um, I, it's kind of what you would expect when a former president almost gets his head blown off. And, and your team failed, so you know it's 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 pretty fair. They they asked Mrs. Cheadle questions about basically what happened, and her responses were pretty sparse. Either she didn't know the answer, or she couldn't reveal the answers because of the ongoing investigation. I watched the thing. You watched the whole thing. Like, like she didn't even know. What the answer? Yeah, yeah. Like, um, it, it it well, it seemed like somebody that knew some things, but just what like she wouldn't answer that question for nothing. No. Yeah, she. Uh, I I don't know if she was beating around the question, intentionally beating around the the bush because she didn't want to give information out, or if she just didn't know. I'm leaning towards both. It was probably both. Because there were times where she said, I'm not going to give you names of people. And then there were times where she goes, I don't have that information in front of me. And they're like, it's been nine days since it. I mean, they were really going, they were really going at her. I'll, I'll put some clips up because it's pretty, it's pretty rough. Um, oh, yeah, she came to the thing here and thing. And they asked her a question and she said, well, I don't have that with me. And the woman said, well, you're coming to this thing here and you don't have that information with you? Yeah. It's been nine days. I don't yeah, I don't. Like I said, I don't know if she was just beating around the bush or if she genuinely didn't know. But uh, many of the state representatives, so you know, the, the, these are these are people who whose job it is to ask this lady questions, question her on the timeline and the events that happened, uh, the prep work and everything that happened after. And 
many of them were pretty unhappy with her responses. Again, like she didn't really do a good job of answering these questions. And a, a lot of those, a lot of those representatives said out loud that that they did not really like what she had to say. Nancy Mace said that she was full of s, or either that or this is complete BS or something like that. Yeah, she she honestly that's not very professional <laughs> in my opinion. But you know, uh, you know, yeah, and you, when I watched that, you were talking about they didn't act professional, but the 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 ones that was questioning her, they seemed like they kind of went beyond professional, like they were coming at her personally. Yeah, if you go back, if you watch agreed, that. I would agree. Uh, uh, a lot of people commented that the fact that she failed. That, well, not only the Secret Service failed, but she failed as a leader of the Secret Service. Um, and then again, with the questions, completely dropped the ball on that. One person even commented, do you like your job? Because if you want to keep it, you should probably start answering questions because you're doing a pretty bad job. Ideally, I would encourage... Uh you and the agency to be more forthright with the members that still have yet uh, to have their questioning because the public deserves to have full confidence and the stakes are too high. The violence that could break out in this political moment, regardless of party, in the event of someone getting hurt constitutes a national security threat to the entire country. Um, was it true that Secret Service was present at the Butler ESU briefing? There was a briefing between the uh, counter sniper teams was uh, that were working Secret on Service the ground. Was Secret Service present? Yes, to my knowledge. Okay, I want to read you a report from people that seemed to be throwing you under the bus and stated that they were in attendance and that Secret Service was not in attendance at the security briefing, according to individuals with knowledge, to also include that the AGR building where the shooter Thomas Matthew Crooks was located um, was actually not a part of their security perimeter for that. So there was not Secret Service present. Um, I will say this, it is very frustrating, and I've talked to my colleagues and we've said it to your face, that you have been up here basically stonewalling our ability to get the answers to the American people. And what I will also say is that every single member of Congress does not feel safe with you in charge. You have heard that. And I think that we are all sitting ducks with you and directing the Secret Service currently. Uh, but more importantly, it sends a message to our adversaries that we are not protected. And we are one of the strongest countries in the world. So you have essentially made us a less safe country because of it. Um, I will say that I am just completely disgusted by your performance today. And I understand that you are probably in a position where you are being told not to testify, which is why we had to subpoena you. I think that goes back to Garland. But again, that is part of the uh, flushing that we need to get out of Washington, and I would be happy to assist in that process. Chairman, I yield the rest of my time. At what, what time did, was Secret Service aware of the active threat against President Trump? Director, what time? So the Secret Service was aware that there was an individual who had been identified as suspicious, uh, and that that individual uh, was attempting to be tracked down. At what time? I don't have a specific timeline other than to Director, tell you, it's been nine days. I understand At what that. time? I, I want to make sure that I give you factual information, sir. Director, how many days before the shooting took place did Secret Service actually do their advance work to secure the facility that the rally was going to be held at? Five days. In the five days prior, when the, when the security uh, advance team did their work, did they, did, that, they, did they identify the rooftop as a potential threat? Again, I'm pulling those reports and that information. It's been nine days, Madam interviews. Director. Did they know that? Did they notice a rooftop 150 yards away that was a potential threat? Yes or no? I am certain that the rooftop was noticed. I am pulling the reports. What was the security or the security parameters around securing that rooftop? There what was, did they do? There was Overwatch provided for that rooftop. Did Overwatch fail? I am waiting to hear what the results of the investigation were so that I can identify where the failure was. Your organization, the Secret Service, I'm quite sure somebody saw the shooter on the roof. So what was the communication through the chain of command to deal with said person? What I can tell you is that when the individual was identified by the counter sniper, they took one shot and neutralized that individual. But that was after the shooter already took a shot, is that correct? That is correct. 
So what you're saying now is that the Secret Service did not see the shooter on the roof until after the shooter took a shot? I do not have all of those details at this time. If you don't have those details after nine days, Director, then what you're telling me is that you guys didn't see it. Um, in my opinion, you do need to be fired immediately. And it is because this is gross incompetence. And the fact that it's been nine days, and these are simple questions to, to answer, I'm quite sure if I asked any one of my kids if they got in trouble and I told them to give me the details, I would get more answers from them than I'm getting from you right now. And that's what's frustrating on a bipartisan basis, on a nonpartisan basis. This is a joke. And director, you're in charge. And that's why you need to go. Mr. Chairman, I yield back. You said, I am here today to answer your questions. That is correct. Answer the question. I'm not gonna provide names of our personnel why not today? The American people are demanding these answers from you today, Ms. Cheadle. I will do the best to provide you accurate information based on the facts that I have at this time. You're not answering our questions. We'd like a copy of the advance report. Have you brought it here with you today? We will comply with the request for the documentation that has been requested. When will that be, Ms. Cheadle? Because you should have brought it today. I am certain that our personnel are working on uh, obtaining all of that document. I don't believe you, and neither do the people watching this hearing. You're not doing well, as Mr. Mos Moskowitz informed you. You've been sitting here for over three hours, and I have you know the entire country is demanding you resign and demanding that you be fired if you do not resign. Things are not going well for you. You need to answer the questions. How did he fly a drone over the area, period, any part of the area? Again, I would have to go back and check the timeline of when that took place and when the event. Why didn't you bring the timeline with you today to answer our questions? I don't have all of the answers on the timelines based on the criminal investigation. Were you not prepared today to answer our questions? I am prepared to answer the questions based on the information uh, and wanted to be able to provide. Do you have a timeline that you, do you have a timeline at all from, from any of the day? I have a uh, timeline that does not have specifics. That's shocking. <laughs> I, that is absolutely unacceptable. That means you are a failure at your job. An individual with a rangefinder is not a threat. What about a man laying on a building that has direct line of sight of President Trump with a gun that people are screaming and pointing out? Is that a threat, Ms. Cheadle? Once that individual was identified, they were neutralized. No, they were neutralized. Crooks was neutralized after he shot President Trump in the face, Ms. Cheadle. Is he only a threat once he fires the weapon? As soon as the counter sniper identified that individual, they were able to neutralize them. How were people in the crowd? Okay, then let's just take it this way. People under your command did not consider him to be a threat, yet people in the crowd knew he had a gun and considered him to be a threat. That means that you are a complete failure as the director of the Secret Service, that people under your command don't perceive a man laying on a roof with direct line to the president with a gun. They don't perceive that to be a threat, yet the people in the crowd do. How is that possible? That's the last question, but please answer the question, Ms. Uh, director. I'm not certain at this time how the information from the people in the crowd was relayed to any law enforcement personnel. No, you knew that everyone knew the people there knew that there was a danger. They knew there was a threat to President Trump and it was allowed to happen. Was there a stand down order, Ms. Cheadle? Was there a conspiracy to kill President Trump? Absolutely not. Then how did this happen? And why are you still sitting here not turning in your letter of resignation? Last question, but please answer and then I'll recognize Ms. Presley. Please answer the question. Director. That is what we are investigating to determine. We're, we're waiting for your letter. We are waiting for your letter of resignation, and you, you really need to consider doing that before you leave today. Are you, have you used any encrypted app to communicate on, from your personal device? I do on occasion uh, use encrypted apps to communicate. Uh, so you use some form of an encrypted app to communicate with, with people within the federal government, with local law enforcement? Whom, whom are you communicating using encrypted apps? 
uh, many times it's with colleagues and, uh, and associates. So you're communicating with colleagues on a personal device? There are times that the Secret Service, when we work uh, internationally uh, with some of our partners, that they don't have the same texting capability. And you, you're not able to do that with your, with your government issued device? Uh, recently, we have been able to uh, install some of those apps on government devices. Okay. Um, let's talk about some of the things uh, that we can get access to. I, I'm actually shocked that you are using your personal device um, and encrypted communication tools. I think that that might be the most shocking thing that I've heard today. It's shocking to me that we are communicating in, in an um, encrypted app to colleagues. Um, I, I'm almost certain that violates some federal laws. I, I would like to clarify, you didn't ask me whether my communications were uh, government work-related or whether they were personally related. You're communicating I with colleagues. I don't communicate uh, government business with colleagues on a personal device. I communicate on my work device. Are you using an encrypted device on your work device? I am not. No, no encrypted apps? No, I do not. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Most of my questions are going to demand a yes or no answer. Do you understand? I do. Okay. My first question. Both sides of the aisle today have asked for your resignation. Would you like to use my five minutes to draft your resignation letter, yes or no? No, thank you. <clears throat> was this a colossal failure? It was a failure. Yes or no? Was it a colossal failure is the question, yes or no? I have admitted this is a terrible This is a failure. yes or no series of questions. Was this a colossal failure, yes or no? Yes. Was this tragedy preventable, yes or no? Yes. Has the Secret Service been transparent with this committee? Yes. Would you say the fact that we had to issue a subpoena to get you to show up today as being transparent, yes or no? I have always been yes eager to Yes or no, you didn't want to answer the, the question. Committee. We had to issue a subpoena to get you to show up today. That is not transparent, by the way. You stated earlier, Secret Service is not political. Is that correct? Yes. Okay, would you say leaking your opening statement to Punchbowl News, Politico's playbook, and Washington Post several hours before you sent it to this committee as being political, yes or no? I have no idea how my statement got out. <sighs> well, that's bull. Is the Secret Service fully cooperating with our committee? Yes. Okay, you say you're fully cooperating with this committee. Um, on July 15th, this committee sent you a list of demands of information that we wanted. Has the Secret Service provided this committee a complete list of all law enforcement personnel that were there that day? Have you done that? Have you provided a list to the Oversight Committee? Yes I, or no? I'll have to get back to you on that. <laughs> that is a no. Have you provided all audio and video recordings in your possession to this committee as we asked on July 15th, yes or no? I would have to get back to you. That on is that. a no. You're full of today. You're just being completely dishonest, Mr. Chairman. Completely dishonest. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Chairman, I want to. Mr. Ch I'm come on, we have to maintain decorum in this committee. Any, no matter how have you upset provided we any get, and all, you are being dishonest or lying. Like, I, I just, you're being dishonest here with this committee. These are important questions that the American people want answers to, and you're just, you're just dodging and and talking around it in generalities. And we had to subpoena you to be here, and you won't even answer the questions. We have asked you repeatedly to answer our questions. This isn't hard. Th these are not hard questions. Um, so just one day after that hearing, Mrs. Cheadle, Cheadle resigned from her position as director of the Secret Service. She sent a, uh, a resignation letter to like all the employees of the Secret Service. And one of the lines read, quote, I take full responsibility for the security lapse. In light of recent events, it is with a heavy heart that I have made the difficult decision to step down as your director, end quote. Everybody always puts that. It's with a heavy heart that I, but uh, that's pretty sucky for her. But in a situation like this where a former president and candidate, presidential candidate almost got his wig split, from some deranged dude who was 500 feet away on a roof that should have been, you know, covered. <laughs> That's a pretty good way to lose your job.
You know what I mean? So, let's think about something. Every time one of these higher people do something wrong, they always let them jokers resign instead of firing them. That's the rich folk for you. That's the, the government for you. Right? I guess. It's like, okay, you did wrong. Now, if you resign, we ain't got to fire you. You know? Like, you're letting them off easy. Well, to be fair, though, I don't think they could fire her until the investigation was completed. So I think they were getting close to it. Well, th th that's it that's might they, that's it might have been strategic said, for her to just resign she before she gave up. I'm gonna resign. <laughs> Looks better on the resume, you know. But uh, she was the scapegoat for all this. She was the scapegoat for all this. Well, somebody had to all be. back on her. Somebody had to be. They probably paid her millions and millions of dollars. I mean, whoa, whoa, whoa. Pay you a million dollars and you're going to be the scapegoat. All right. Last week we were talking about conspiracies and now you're just hey. throwing some. This is not endorsed by the Lions this Podcast. Is. This this is not an endorsed conspiracy theory by us throwing that out there right now. This is not a conspiracy. This is this locker room talk. Well, you see how that went last time they tried that. That didn't work out too good. Man got indicted over that. <laughs> um, so, it, like, to keep on going with, this isn't a politics show, by the way. This isn't going to be, like, the Daily Wire or whatever. But to keep with the momentum here, this is a, this is proved to be, I don't know, in, in the world of politics, a pretty big time for Kamala Harris. Kamala, Kamala, I don't really know how to say her name. She likes coconuts. I don't know if anybody's seen that. You seen that? Where she was talking about coconuts? She's like, did they just... What uh, you Kamala, Kamala, Kamala. Kamala. Kamala here? Some people call it Kamala. Where she... Well, where, I don't think that's she, her name. she was saying something like, uh, did they just fall out of a coconut tree? <laughs> and did that like crazy laugh that she been? My mother used to... She would give us a hard time sometimes and she would say to us, I don't know what's wrong with you young people. You think you just fell out of a coconut tree? <laughs> you exist in the context of all in which you live and what came before you. Um, but in, in case you are sleeping under a rock with no Wi-Fi or cable, Joe Biden dropped out. Pretty sure everybody knows that by now. At least the like 20 people who watch. Uh, he dropped out of the presidential race, and like some people say, you were never there. Well, uh, he he decided that it would be best for the country at large for him just to focus on his presidency as it stands. He said in a statement, "quote I believe is it in oh, quote I believe it is in the best interest of my party and the country for me to stand down." and to focus solely on fulfilling my duties as president for the remainder of my term, end quote. Now, many of his fellow party members praised Joe Biden's actions and made it clear that he made the right choice because, you know, they were only wanting him to step down after the first debate. So they all talked him into stepping down. I guess. And then when he steps down, they want to praise him. When they didn't want to step down from the start, they kind of twisted his arm to make him come to that decision to step down. That's I, my view on it. I, I guess after the first presidential debate between Trump and Biden took place on June 27th, uh, I, I'm pretty sure that that was the beginning of the downfall of Joe Biden's decision to step down. That wasn't the beginning of the end for Joe Biden. That happened probably before that. But for, for him to step down, because at first, he felt pretty confident mentally and physically that, you know, uh, he could debate Trump, but like also run the country for another four years. He had his moment on live TV during this debate to prove everybody that he was right. He could debate Trump and he could run this country for four years. And uh, it, did, it, didn't, it didn't 
Yeah, I didn't go to this. Fix the tax system. For example, we have a thousand trillionaires in America. I mean, billionaires in America. And what's happening? They're in a situation where they, in fact, pay 8.2 percent in taxes. If they just paid 24 percent, 25 percent, either one of those numbers, they've raised 500 million dollars, billion dollars, I should say, in a 10-year period. We'd be able to right wipe out his debt. We'd be able to help make sure that all those things we need to do, child care, elder care, making sure that we continue to strengthen our health care system, making sure that we're able to make every single solitary person uh, eligible for what I've been able to do with the uh, with, with, with the COVID, excuse me, with um, dealing with everything we have to do with, uh, look, if we finally beat Medicare. Thank you, President uh, Biden. President Trump? Well, he's right. He did beat Medicare. He beat it to death, and he's destroying Medicare. President Biden? You can see he is six foot five and only 223 pounds, or 235 pounds. Well, you said 6'4", 200. Well, anyway, that's what you're, anyway. Just take a look at what he says he is and take a look at what he is. Look, I'd be happy to have a driving contest with him. The re- I got my handicap, which when I was vice president, down to a six. And, and but by the way, I told you before, I'm happy to play golf if you carry your own bag. Think you can do it? That's the biggest lie. That he's a six handicap of all. I was an eight handicap. Yeah. Eight. Yeah. But I have, you know how many? How, I've seen r- you swing. I know you swing. Let's not act like children. What I've done since I've changed the law, what's happened? I've changed it in a way that now you're in a situation where there are 40 percent fewer people coming across the border illegally. It's better than when he left office. And I'm going to continue to move until we get the total ban on the, 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 the total initiative relative to what we're going to do with more Border Patrol and more uh, asylum officers. President Trump? I really don't know what he said at the end of that sentence. I don't think he knows what he said either. Look, it it didn't go so good that it was to the point that his own party members were telling him, you should probably step down. And they were flirting with the idea of getting someone younger and more effective to fill the spot in. What it seems like to me is Joe Biden dipped his toe into the hot tub and realized the water was a little too hot, so decided to decided it's probably best if I just drop out of the candidacy and just, you know, focus on what I got going on right now. You think that? Huh? I don't think that. I think they forced him to step down. Bo. I think they forced him to step down. That line up? I think they forced him to step down. I don't think he wanted it. You know, they. Who's they? (laughs) Uh, I ain't calling no names. Okay. I'm not going to say no names. So, you know, they the Democrat s- Party. Sneak into your house. Democrats right? behind closed doors. How about I say that? Well. There's some Democrats behind closed doors. I just, I think there's some politicians calling in, shots. in general. Like, uh, but at, after Joe Biden dropped out, he was very quick to endorse Kamala Harris. <laughs> you know. Yeah. I think that kind of made sense to him to do that. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, the others that didn't quickly endorse her. Yeah. I, I believe since he was the president, and she was the vice president, I think that was what he felt like. He may not even wanted to do it, but I think that's what he felt like doing because she yeah. was under him. And she she took that to heart. Like she she because I, I believe if. If she, if he didn't endorse her, then I think that, to me, makes him look more, look, makes him look worse. And so he endorsed her because he stands true to his policies, which is her policies, because it's they were together. So he endorses her, so his policies, yeah. he still stands by. Yeah, I mean, his, his way. You know. She took that she she took that endorsement head on and basically decided she wanted to be the face of the Democratic Party, which Kamala Harris being the vice president, first female vice president in U.S. history. So she she's gunning for the the nomination at the DNC convention, uh, the Democrat National Convention in Chicago, 
August 19th to the 22nd. Uh, but to be like honest with you, as of right now, she has enough supports from the Democrats, like from the Democratic delegates, to win the nominational spot. Uh, I think that thing said she had like 1,900 and something delegates. So she's got enough to win. I mean, that doesn't mean that she has it. Well, but she she has enough. I think it's her. Yeah, 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 yeah. And if she if, she, if they're thinking. You know, in the way they should think. I think it would be her. Because mm -hmm. I think if it wasn't her, I think it would hurt the yeah. party. Yeah, yeah. Unless it was somebody spectacular to come out of the wood, out of nowhere. Well, but I just think it's her because she's the vice president. And I, I, think, I think they feel like that's the only hope. Mm hmm. So, which they, I'll, they I'll, get in, her. I'll get into how I feel about that. And she has to pick a vice president too, so Yeah, and if if she wins the nominee then she she's gonna go head to head with Trump November fifth, uh, for the twenty twenty four election. But she has just over a hundred days to uh, to to rally America behind her cause and, and to get her vote. Which a hundred days is a lot of days and isn't a lot of days to, you know, gain support but here's the thing right, here's the thing based off of recent polls it shows Kamala catching up to Donald Trump pretty fast uh, and in some she overtakes Donald Trump now this is this is the July 2024 New York Times slash uh, I don't know I don't know if it's Siena or uh, Sina poll. This is just one. This is just one of the polls that I'm referencing. So, the one poll included leaners, which are basically people who lean towards one party more than the other. This includes the leaners. They were asked if the 2024 presidential election were held today, who would you vote for, Trump or Kamala? Trump had 48 percent of those votes. Kamala had 47. So he's only up by one. Okay. Another poll was had Trump at 43% and Kamala at 44%. So she's up by one. And then you have one poll that included leaners, but leaners who weren't supporting Trump or Harris. They were supporting other people. They were asked if you had to decide between the two candidates today, who would you go for? And it was Trump had 37% and Kamala had 28 So he has a little bit of a lead there. So... At this point, Kamala is out outperforming Joe Biden when it comes to uh, public opinion pretty significantly. But she still falls just a little bit short of Trump. And uh, honestly, in my opinion, I think this is going to, by the time November gets here, I think this is going to be really close. Okay? Especially on this account. Look, I I'm 25. I, I come from the the generation that is pretty dominant nowadays, and this culture, like like what I mean is like number, no 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 like the influence that they, with social media and and perceptions and all that so like the culture that we live in in America, people one like to make history, they love making history. Look at all the things that have happened, all the accomplishments that people have strived for, right? And they like to push these things to be the norm. Uh, so, hypothetically, if you get enough young voters who want to create a major historical event and they had that at the forefront of their minds, they show up to cast a vote, they might vote for Kamala Harris over Trump, especially with Trump being as controversial as he is. And a lot of people, younger people nowadays, like to go against the grain. So especially if a lot of older people like Trump, the younger people probably aren't going to like Trump. Uh, that's, that's just kind of how it is with a lot of things. But Trump is very controversial. He's very rough around the edges sometimes. People don't like that. So you get people who want the first female woman of color president. Dude, I, I think that she's probably got a good... A good shot, especially 
with younger people who hold the democratic views, she holds all the same views as Biden. So if you get you get enough people to turn out, I I, I think she could nab it. That's just me. Um, but like you said, um, this thing about being the first to do this, the first to do that, that kind of plays a role in our culture, and that kind of plays a role in America. Yeah. It's a lot of people like things to be the first. And it's okay to have the first, first of this, first of that. But the big picture is you got to be careful who you settle for just because mm -hmm. you want them to be the first. You got to be careful of who you settle for in this life when it comes to being the first. Yeah. Like if it were up to me, I wouldn't have went with Trump. I would have went with somebody else. Like preferably Well, I'm I'm not gonna say who I'm not gonna say who, who I was who I was gunning for, but like he, he wasn't my first choice. <laughs> so when that last this time? Uh like when when they were doing their campaigns to nar to narrow down who who was gonna be left. I had like I have one one dude in my mind, but like what what I said about Kamala, I it's just my opinion that young voters might turn out in mass to vote her in. I don't necessarily know if I hundred percent believe it, but who knows? I, I'm just gonna say it here. Me, I think Kamala Harris might beat him, <laughs> just with the way I don't know. I just have a feeling. I, I couldn't tell you any more than that, but like that's that's just me. Who who knows? Uh, you know how some people like to force their agenda on you, but I don't. That's, I'm not whoa, that, whoa, whoa. I'm not that way. Like to force agenda. their agenda. Agenda. I thought you said gender. Oh, yeah. Same difference. <laughs> agenda. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I don't think we're that way. I ain't trying to force Trump on nobody. I ain't trying to force come out of house on nobody. Yeah, we just speaking. Yep. So, I, I'm just talking. Yeah, because some people say, "Oh, they must they must love Democrats. They must love Republicans." No, that ain't it. I'm I'm just telling you what I think. That's all. A lot of people in this world they vote for whoever they think that is best for in their heart. Who they who they feel best is in their heart. That's how most people vote. Yeah. That's, that's how it is. Look, that's how it's always been. In my opinion, it might not always be that way yet, because who knows yeah. how the elections and all that gonna be in the yeah. future. In my opinion, here's how I think the president should behave. I think if it's a Republican president, they should choose a Democratic vice president, and if it's a Democratic president, they should choose a Republican vice president. Here's why: checks and balances. That's the reason he was he was saying this earlier before we started. That's why you have a two actually a, a multiple party system is so one party doesn't have so much power there's a difference in views so if you have a republican president and a democratic vice president they can feed off of each other and collectively fill the need of all the people instead of this my side's better no my side's better and then all of a sudden you got everybody at war with each other just my opinion i'm not an expert maybe i'm an idiot who knows which probably some different ways some sides make sense on some things and some sides make sense you know yeah there's some things that a lot on the democrat side i don't agree with but you know that i don't agree with it but how it is in this life yeah some things republicans do i don't think are the smartest but <laughs> like i mean the republicans ain't the answer because if they were we wouldn't be where we're at today yeah uh, I, I I think uh, a lot of things call for a harmonization between groups. But I don't know. I, I don't know. That's just my opinion. Who who knows? But uh, the last thing we got is like a hundred and eighty degree shift. It had nope. nothing to do with all us. It segues way. It segues way right into all this politics. Oh yeah. Yep. <laughs> don't. Does it? Yeah, read it.
What's it called? The Wiener Mobile. Safely read right into all this. <laughs> the Wiener Mobile politician. Whatever you want to call it. All right, you this gonna year. Have, you gonna have to break that down for me. Wiener Mobile down. When you read it. So. Oh, all right. What? Well, see, I didn't think it was political, but. Uh, <laughs> no. I, I'm pretty sure. It's segue into all this okay. political. All right. All right. I'm pretty sure going on. Uh, that everybody, for the most part, knows who Oscar Mayer is. They like they a circus. they make like they they make like American meats. You got your you got your cold cut. They're they're cold cut producers. What? <laughs> they're known for their hot dogs. That's like their big thing. Bologna, ham, lunchable products. What? Well, uh, politics full of bologna. Ah. Well, that's one. Sorry. Mm. I see. So I'm sure you've had their meat in your. Okay, let me see, let me not say it. Thing. Let me not say it like that. It Hold on. You over. Let me not say it like that. <laughs> uh, I'm sure you've eaten their meat before. Okay, so they're they're famous for what's called the Wiener Mobile. I've seen this thing in person. It's actually driven right past me. It's actually pretty cool. Looks like the weirdest spaceship you've ever seen. Uh, it's a custom-made 27-foot-long vehicle in the shape of a hot dog on a bun. I'll add a photo for you, just in case you've never been graced to see this. Uh, they were hiring recently. Were they? The driver. Well, I wonder why. The drivers must be drunk. $18 an hour or something like that. They I would do... it all over. I, that <laughs> sounds... Oh, my goodness, dude. That sounds so worth it to me. I would do that. Well, I can see why they're hiring because their drivers must be drunk. So basically, the Wiener Bill's, the Wiener Mobile's main purpose is, like he said, to drive around to different places. It's like a big advertisement. Uh, they don't give out like hot dogs, but they have whistles and little trinkets and stuff. But they go from state to state. They take photos. They they do promotions, and uh, they they post it on all their social media websites. It, they they normally drive like two hundred thousand miles per year and they hit like 20 states i do that for 18 dollars an hour dude in a heartbeat well unfortunately while they were traveling through cook county in illinois dude i just realized something i swear cook county we've seen that on like the live pd where the dude where they like have live video cameras of officers i swear i've seen cook county pop up on that thing Many times. Might not be this. No, it's around here. I don't know. Maybe. It might not be. It, but it has come through here. I think it's come right through our thing. What? The Wiener Mobile. Oh, yeah. I've seen it. It was in Charleston. It went right past me. I took photos of it. It's pretty cool. But it was rolling. The, the rolling Wiener Mobile was heading down the highway when it hit a, uh, a Hyundai and it kind of lost control. As wiener mobiles do, they're not really the most See, aerodynamic. Goes along with lost control. Lost control. Crash. Losing control. Yeah. Then, then it kind of overcorrected and rolled into the. Uh, it rolled onto the Hyun the the Hyundai, Hyundai, Hyanda, Hyanda. You know what I'm saying? Hyundai. It's not right. Hyundai. It's Hyundai. It's the different H. Honda. No, it wasn't a Honda. Hyundai. Yeah, I think. So, uh, I, you know what? I do see. Full of baloney, lost control, basically. Oh, not only that, no one was hurt, but the northbound lanes were shut down for about an hour. So, major inconveniences. And they wrecked. Yes. This whole politician stuff is wrecked. You know what? Now I see it. It does make a lot of sense, so. Don't you? So, there's that. Congratulations. You've been blessed with this Wienermobile story, you should feel happy so well we have back to the basic normal schedule is Kaylee if she's awake I think she might have went in the back room and fell asleep because Kaylee is I swear she's narcoleptic she will fall asleep anywhere she, but asleep talking to you. she literally will uh, I'm going to see if she's awake and she's going to present her joke of the week I'm not sure if there's a riddle but we'll see to call a white person on the 4th of July. Cracker. Wow, I cracker.
Is that safe to say on it? A cracker. I guess. So I might say you can wait to say it, but I might defend some white person. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm sure they'll be all right. So, Kaylee is here. As you can see, the contrast right now is crazy. Dark, gray, <laughs> and then, like, Kaylee's Fiesta Bowl shirt. So, Kaylee has three jokes. Mm-hmm. There is no riddle. Sorry. Uh, yeah, sorry. I, I lied. But I didn't know, so I didn't lie. So, it's there's three jokes. But. Progressively funnier. But. Said. I thought it was only fitting that I throw... And some political jokes. Oof. So I got some political jokes for y'all. All right. I'm ready. Yeah. Okay, ready? I'm going to buy him a keyboard. Because that joke right there, bro. tip tap dip a tap tippity tapping. Okay, ready? He moved his hands off the counter and then started tapping his chair. All right, boy. Okay. You ready? You ready? 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 Yep. Ready? Yep. Okay. Have you heard about the political party that's using really good weed to promote their political views and opinions? Yes. Yeah? Yeah. What is it? No. I ain't heard of it. It's propaganda. <laughs> propaganda. <laughs> propaganda. Mm. Got your cricket. No one's over there. I'll put it in right now. Whatever. Okay, next one. Ready? Yeah. <laughs> Where do Paul... Oh, sorry. Well? <laughs> Where do politicians get their hair cut? Uh... It's a joke, never real. Spencer's on 47 and 3rd. No. Where? Where? Budget cuts. <laughs> Pretty greedy. Yeah. yeah. Oh, come on. I thought these were good. Okay. Okay. Come on. Budget cuts. It's good. It's good. Like higher taxes. <laughs> Can you imagine if there was a barbershop called Higher Taxes? High top taxes. <laughs> hmm. They only specialize in high top fades. So. <laughs> Did you hear about the politician with no body? Nobody knows. They say he's ahead in the polls. Oh. That that's better than what I said. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I got nobody. Get it? Yeah. They say he's ahead in the polls. <laughs> to go what we talked about earlier, he probably win. That that's history. The first bodyless president? There's some Futurama types there right there. Yeah, I had the first soldier. The first what? The first oldest one? I thought you said the first Olsen. Soulless. Oh, the first soulless <laughs> one. Hey, no. you know which president that is? Whichever one that fir first came to your mind when he said that. <laughs> Bam. All right. That was it. That was my three. What? That was my three. Oh, okay. Jokes. Congratulations. <laughs> you got any off the top of the, top of the dome? You got any dad jokes, father man? No? Mm. Mm. I thought... I don't know if I want to make I America these were actually angry really good. at me for no reason. I thought these were pretty good. But budget cuts was, was all right. Yeah. Well, High top taxes. That was a pretty good... That was a pretty good... Well, propaganda. Propaganda. <laughs> that was a hit or miss. That was a good one. Any stoner that watches and this then, is like, probably dying. The politician would no body. He was a head in the polls. Literally and figuratively. Stupid. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I thought I did good. It was okay. It was pretty good. It was alright. It was good. Better than the uh, before? Am I getting better? I don't know if I can say that. <laughs> but you are trying, so that's yeah. good. There's always next time, folks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Maybe. She might be fired. Who knows? What? But. No, no. I'm just. Anyway, well, we're just going to cut it. We're just going to cut it right there. That scene's pretty good. Uh, yeah. He, this, him, the, the, that one right there, he has something in the works that he's been talking to me about. So, you'll get that soon. When? I don't know. He's keeping it a mystery. 
but you'll know about it when you know, because that's how knowing works. When you know, you know. You know. Facts. It's like a politician. Yeah. <laughs> when it happens, you'll know, because that is how knowing works. Oh, okay. I got wait. I got another. I got another. I got another one. You know Give me all your money. You know the thing. Yeah, the thing. Come what's, on. Come what's on, the guy. Here, I got, I got this last joke that I remembered reading. What's the difference between... What's the difference between a politician and a flying pig? What? The letter F. Hmm. Get it? I do. Get it? A lying pig. A lying pig. <laughs> I, she said it, you know. It that was, was the, a good it, one, right? It was the first person that came to your mind when she said that. <laughs> <laughs> we'll end it right there and not say anything else. Have fun with that imagery. We'll see you next time. Bye. Imagery? Yeah, yeah imagery. Y yeah, you mean imagery. That's what I said. You said imagery. We'll see you next time. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>